lives this season of all people of this land. So they will know that Christmas is more than just a day. It's formed of love and caring in a very special way. We pray that the Savior's promises might live through things we share, that sparks might start from others as his people show they care. So Christian love will linger on long past the day of birth till others know its meaning all over this great earth. Amen. Amen. Mayor Stafford? Here. Alderman Lincoln? Here. Alderman Sahaski? Here. Alderman Weston? Here. Alderman Sherman? Here. Alderman Thompson? Here. Alderman Woodward? City Attorney Hawthorne? Here. All present, your Honor. Thank you. First item. The city clerk was authorized and directed to advertise for a public auction to be held at this council meeting of December 19th for the sale of approximately 20.058 acres of city-owned property. Whereas the city attorney ordered a property survey of this property as more appropriately described as attached here too. Whereas the common council set the minimum bid of $10,000 with bidding increments of $10,100 and whereas a successful bidder must deposit with the city clerk in the form of a check or cash, 10% of his bid with the balance to be paid to the city clerk's office 30 days from the date of said auction. Whereas the common council reserves the right to reject any and all bids if in the opinion of the common council or officer in charge, said bid is not in the best interest of the city of Fulton. Mayor Stafford shall conduct the auction and hereby shall declare the bidding open. Before we start the bidding, we need to know how many people will be bidding on this property, and please come forward and give your name and address. Name's Robert Aluzzo. That's A-L-U-Z-Z-O. And the address is 2108 Drummers Court. That's Baldwinsville, New York, 13027. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Lake, L-A-K-E, 1329, County Route 85, Hannibal, New York. Could you have, excuse me, could you, Peter, could you please give me that a little bit slower? Sorry. Which part? <coughs> the New York the address. Park? <laughs> <laughs> 1329, County Route 85. Bruce Thorpe, 122 Baldwin Ave, Fulton, New York. $10,000. Your Honor, could we make sure that the people bidding on this understand that that zone R1A and it, the only single family homes go in there? Okay. Are you all, all the bidders aware of that? That is zoned R1A, only single family homes can go in there. Okay. I have one question there. They just said it was 20.6 acres, I believe, this show. That's what the survey showed, yes. No, is that, that is basically a landlocked piece of property, correct? There's one strip that comes off the street that we do own that goes with this. Do we have the map? Going to be access from the street, so yes. yes. If if the three bidders would care to come forward and take a look at the map so that there's no misinformation. For the benefit of uh, some of the people, I wonder if we could tell them exactly where the property is. It's all in the dark lines here. Yeah, it includes this right here. This is 66.25 foot yeah. wide strip that fronts the point of the This is property you're concerned about. These are all paper streets. There are no streets where the property knows this is wooded and. That's everything north.
up to the railroad tracks. Well, not everything. The tracks are here, and there's still some land here. That... But that entire block is north of the railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing yes. south of the tracks. Your, your rider? Yes. Bob, I got something in mind. Yep. Just, once they get this on, I'll have David explain where it is. <laughs> Anything that... Any, to answer questions or anything like that, we're showing yeah, sure. 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 surveyors were always showing over. Sure. This shows us a line here, and there's other these are there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, they don't necessarily always show underground because they don't know about it. There's a sewer line that runs down White Avenue Creek. You saw that. That's now quite on the no. Yeah, I understand. I understand there should be no problem accessing the city's water and sewer. You always have to have access to the main yourself. The city, anywhere it's provided along the, along the side of the street, the property owner has to access it themselves. This, this this survey was done by the surveyor with the abstract title, so there are a lot of references here, like deep parcel 13, that's from the abstract, deep parcel 5, that's from the abstract. Well, none to my knowledge, um, an abstract or a survey wouldn't pick that up. I mean, I suppose if a surveyor went out here and did this, and back in here they found a bunch of six barrels, I would think they'd help. But sure. I, mean, I haven't personally looked at it. Well, no. Environmental. Watch the cords. Property. Yeah. We're not. And we're not. Uh, we are not giving any guarantees or any representations about that either way. I mean, to my knowledge, there's nothing to problems. But it's over years. It's been basically. Well, well, I don't know. Run me no more. On the hill up there, the city used to own a trash can, and they they did dumb stuff over that hill, like washers, dryers, and things like that. So there may, so there may be stuff up in there. <laughs> He said, looking from Kimball, you can see some stuff up on the hill in the spring. Is this resolution here, by the way? Is this going on? Because of that, we're going to 
gonna have to order a phase one environmental study, which is probably gonna help the price a few thousand. Because we're gonna have to do it. There was a Howard family, right? We leased it. Yeah, for the Judge Howard out on uh, Whitaker Road. Yeah. And Somebody's willing to bid on it. We're going to let it go. And I don't blame you for your concerns, but. Um, How big his lens is. Paper streets are wrong. As a rule, well, what happens to the paper streets? They're given to each neighbor to each side. Paper streets are no more than the original layout of the city's master. Well, has everybody seen what they need to see on this? I don't we need to get any of along. that bridge. We give something away now, John. everyone in the audience just where this piece of property that's being auctioned is um, it's in the city that's good. <laughs> cool. it's in the it's sixth the ward it's up in the uh, northeast corner of the city uh, it's a parcel of property that when we came along we looked and found that the city owned quite a few parcels here and there that uh, usually for tax purposes have been taken by the city over the years and this was the biggest one and interest has been generated in this recently by a gentleman who was interested in buying a, a piece of property next to it that also learned that this property was owned by the city and approached us about possibly purchasing it that's why we're here tonight um, it's off of white avenue which is up near um, clark street area and that's it all north the whole entire parcel is north of the railroad tracks correct okay Common Council set a minimum bid of $10,000. Do any of the bidders <clears throat> care to open a bid? $10,000. So you're $10,100. Mr. Lake. 10-1. Do I hear 10-2? Ten 
could be a long evening. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make it up like Brian. Ten eight. <laughs> Brian. Eleven thousand. Anytime either of you gentlemen want to break this off, let me know. Or go higher. Eleven one. Eleven two. Eleven three. Eleven seven. Eleven seven we have. We have a bit of eleven seven. Thank you. Eleven eight. Do we have eleven nine? We have eleven nine. Do we have twelve thousand? We have eleven nine. Eleven nine twice. Eleven nine three times. Sold to Mr. Luzo for eleven thousand nine hundred. Would you come forward, Mr. Luzo, please? Stafford has conducted the auction, has declared the auction closed. Now, therefore, be resolved that the bid in the amount of $11,900 is hereby accepted and awarded to Mr. Robert Aluzzo in the amount of $11,900. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Paul? Okay, yeah. No, I Are you going right back now? Are you going right back to the right now? Yeah. I've seen it indeed right in a few days, but. It's 2108 Drummer's Court. Do you use a middle initial? P. P. Alright. Yep, no problem. That's such a. <laughs> Good evening, Fulton residents. My staff, the Alderman, and I have invested a considerable number of hours in the preparation of the year 2001 budget. In addition, prior to beginning the budget process, my staff and I entered into contract negotiations with three unions representing the Civil Service Employees Association, police officers, and firefighters. These contracts are very important as 70% of our budget is expended in wages and benefits for the city employees. Union wage increases can significantly affect a budget. Our goal was to negotiate contracts that will allow us to maintain the level of services we as Fultonians have become accustomed to. However, still keeping the services affordable to our residents. In an effort to save the city money, we decided to negotiate the contracts with minimal outside assistance and expense. These 
negotiations were very complex and a time and a time consuming task throughout this year. Because the city was asking for some significant concessions, an impasse was declared with both the CSEA and police officer unions. As a result, a mediator from the New York State Public Employment Relations Board was assigned to help us resolve our differences. The major highlights of these contracts, which affect our budget, include one, 3% pay increase for the year 2000 and three and a quarter percent increases for the years 2001 through 2003. A cafe number two, a cafeteria style health benefit plan with all city employees now contributing toward their health care insurance premiums on an increasing scale through the life of the contracts. Three, to avoid hiring additional personnel while increasing hours of availability, we increase the hours of city hall employees from 35 to 40 hours a week. As a result, effective January 2nd, 2001, city hall offices will be open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to better serve the public. No one likes tax increases, myself included. However, with our major revenue sources being sales tax and state aid, with the balance being made up from property taxes, our choices are very limited. While union wages are the largest portion of our budget expenses, contract negotiation and wage increases are necessary to keep the qualified and dedicated city employees we have working for you. Remember, we went to mediation in an effort to keep these costs down. While a reduction of the city's workforce would reduce cost, I do not feel that it is a viable alternative at this time. Our city is moving forward and a reduction in our city workforce would have an adverse effect on the level of services we provide. In summary, the combination of wage increases and some loss in assessments, offset by some anticipated increases in revenue from sales tax and state aid equated to the city needing to raise taxes 6.6% to balance the budget for 2001. During the past several months, we have worked very hard and cut $1 million from the original department's request to reduce the increase to this level. With expenses increasing each year, I think it is important to note that since 1997, taxes in the city of Fulton have increased less than 1% overall. The water and sanitation budgets were both balanced without a rate increase for 2001. It also should be noted that through the hard work and dedication of the employees in both of these departments, there has not been a rate increase in over a decade. In 2001, the establishment of a long-needed crew dedicated to repairing catch basins throughout the city will free up our water and sanitation crews, allowing them to address maintenance issues and problems in their respective areas. At this time, I would like to extend my wishes to you and your families for a safe and happy holiday season. I would now ask my executive assistant, John Crook, to summarize the major points of the 2001 budget. Following John's presentation, we will answer any questions you may have about the budget. At the conclusion of the question and answer period, I will ask the council to pass this budget. Thank you. What I'd like to do is just, is just go over some of the key increases or decreases, additional expenses, or additional revenues, or revenues we're losing in the budget. Uh, just a, an overview, and then I'll give uh, a financial impact of how this uh, will affect the average home.
about revenues from uh, one year to the next. Uh, we're seeing an increase in revenues uh, to the tune of about $200,000. Those revenues come in the form of additional sales tax. Uh, our sales tax this year, we anticipate coming in about $100,000 uh, more uh, than we budgeted. So this is a pretty realistic number with some additional things that we see coming into town. Hopefully the impact of the sale of the Miller Brewing Company property will, will help our sales tax number. Our state aid, uh, we're looking at, at an increase in state aid as a result of the mayor going to conferences, talking to our state officials. We're looking for another $157,000 in state aid. One of our revenue sources uh, that we are losing. We're losing $135,000 uh, from our pilot agreements. This is primarily the hydros. Uh, if you remember, I think it was back in 1998, we negotiated with Niagara Mohawk uh, a pilot reduction. They felt that the hydros were overassessed. Uh, we agreed, and this is part of the pilot agreement. This year, we're losing $135,000 in revenues as a result of that. Uh, other miscellaneous revenues uh, came to about $28,000. So the total in increased revenues is $200,000. The changes in expenses, uh, these are the key things that are in the budget that will, will change the expenses, for the most part, increasing expenses. In wages, $440,000 in wages. This is over a two-year period for the year 2000 and 2001. We're gonna experience a $440,000 increase. This is from settling the contracts that the mayor uh, mentioned we went to mediation on. This is, and the mayor also mentioned, a masonry crew. We have uh, additional people in there for a masonry crew and one additional person for the recreation department. Fuel, everybody has experienced the increase in fuel when you go to gas pumps, so has the city. Fuel for police cars, snow plows, um, our city vehicles, we're anticipating spending $35,000 more next year. Liability insurance is going up. Our carrier gave us a quote on that, to the tune of $20,000. Library uh, is looking for some additional monies. We wanted to put more into street maintenance and sidewalks. Uh, we had additional monies in here, but when we saw how much expense there was, we cut it back. People are constantly calling us, wanting their sidewalks repaired. It's something that people can see done for their tax dollars. What we would like to do is increase this budget about $10,000 every year. We've seen the, the results of uh, sidewalk repair in our city. We get a lot of favorable comments about that. Uh, miscellaneous equipment, uh, materials and equipment. This would be the materials required for the masonry crew. We're gonna need uh, cement, uh, cement mixers, those types of things. Some of the things that we have reduced our expenses, uh, we reduced our contingency. $75,000. In the year 2000, we had 275000 in our contingency. In 2001, we have $200,000. So we're seeing $75,000 reduction. Hopefully we won't have uh, the big items that hit us uh, this year, such as the McCall building. We took out the city engineer. Uh, in the 2000 budget, we said we would like a city engineer. What we have found is that when you try to hire an engineer, uh, you get a specific engineer with a specific uh, expertise. It's better to go to an engineering firm where you may need different expertise, an electrical, uh, a civil. Uh, so we've elected to not hire a city engineer and reduce our budget. Bond indebtedness, one of the things that uh, the mayor, uh, when he campaigned, campaigned on was to reduce bond indebtedness. We're reducing at $30,000 this year, and we've come up with a plan that in the next five or six years, our 
expense to bond indebtedness this year is over a million dollars. We pay uh, for debt, principal, and interest. We want to, in the next five to six years, reduce that to two hundred thousand dollars without taking any any short-term debt to long-term. Uh, miscellaneous expense came to twenty-eight thousand dollars for a total of increased expense of four hundred twenty-one thousand. And these are the these are the key areas that, that we got that four hundred twenty-one thousand from. If you look at the change in expense and the increased revenues, we have a shortfall in this budget of two hundred eighteen thousand dollars, which we have to get from uh, a tax increase to balance the budget. Okay, let me let me explain a little bit about what that would mean. On the tax rate was twelve dollars and forty-one cents. So we're looking in this proposed budget of that being thirteen dollars and twenty-three cents per thousand. That's an increase of about eighty-two cents for every thousand dollars that your house is assessed. That equates to the six point six percent increase that the mayor was talking about. Impact of the average home. The average home in the city is open is assessed for sixty-one thousand dollars. Remember that our rates are in per thousand. Divided by a thousand times the eighty-two cents is fifty dollars a year for the for the average home. So that's where you saw in the paper it says a dollar a week. That's where we got those numbers. Taking the average. Before we go into questions, I'm going to open the public hearing. And we'll answer the questions during the public hearing. Okay. The purpose of this hearing, which is required by law, is an effort of the City of Fulton to provide all citizens, senior citizens, and their representative organizations, and all other interested citizens an opportunity to be heard on a proposed general budget and to express their opinions regarding the proposed 2001 budget. Hearing this, I will declare the public hearing open for the expression of opinions and to answer any questions that anyone may have. Public hearing is now open. Those that care to speak on this, please come forward to the microphone and give your name and address, please. My name is Daryl Hayden, 1215 Bay Street. Sure. Engineering, okay, that's gone up pretty good. I understand you need more engineering because who you have now evidently goes out and watches a guy cut trees and plant trees. So we really don't have an engineer at City Hall, the way it looks to me. And if you do have, explain it to me. We, we do not have a city engineer. We have an engineering helper that uh, that is, is a civil service position in the engineering department, but that's all we have right now. Okay, but you would think that we have somebody in engineering that somebody that work maybe in city garage could go out with them when they cut trees and watch that, take care of that situation rather than tie him up going out cutting trees and planting trees. But from what I see, that's where we're spending our money on that gentleman right now. He, uh, he also goes out with the water and sanitation department and uh, keeps the maps up when, whenever they're, they're on projects uh, to update all our projects and, and the map-wise to, to keep all that uh, information so that we have it. We don't get surprises when we start digging. Yeah, I just had a discussion with him. He was planting trees underneath uh, telephone wires, uh, maple trees. He said they only grow 25, 30 foot. Well, the wires are only 12 foot high. So uh, 
And I wasn't contacted on it that they were even planting trees, but uh, they dug up the lawn. It looks terrible right now. And knowing the situation, well, next year maybe we can get to it. But it sat there for three or four weeks. Nobody did anything to it. That was a that was a contractor that came in and did that, and that is part of a program that is being funded uh, partially by Niagara Mohawk. Okay, the contingency. I see that on the contingency. We said we cut it, but if you look at 1999, we went from 21,000, and now we're cutting back, but we're still losing 178 thousand dollars. If my math is right. Did somebody put a tree in front of your house without telling you about it? that business, they were going to put money in the house and wire. It was 21516 back in 1999. In 2000, it was $275,295. So we cut it back to 2000 but it's still an increase from 1999 to $178,000. Well, we, we had to have the money in there for the 2000 budget because we had pending contract negotiations with all three unions. And that's why we needed the money in there for that. What we also found out is why, why we have the 200,000 for this coming year. One of the things that was thrust upon us this year was we had to purchase this 66 South First Street building and demolish it. The purchase price was $90,000. The demolition price was over $20,000 need is a couple projects like that and your contingency is gone. That that is the problem. Okay, it might have been created before you, but I, I understand there was a problem with the wall. That's why you had to do that. Right? That's right. And and unfortunately things tend to surface that have been done many years ago that all of a sudden become problems and we have to be able to take care of those problems as they surface. Okay, and one other thing on this I see that actual spending has gone up over 7%, even though it says 6.8 something. The actual spending, I can figure, is actually over 7%, if anybody sits down and figures it out, even though the taxes may not be raising that high. If you go by last year's in 2001, that's the actual spending, if you sit down and figure out your math. Yes. Uh, one other thing. I'm closing my business thanks to the city of Hope. That's one part of it. I just want to say that I hope whoever opens a small business in the city of Hope will get better cooperation than I got in the last five years. And there's other people that get the same cooperation. So I, I hope at some point somebody works with business. Because when we're saying we're going to raise sales tax, there's three businesses right there in that mall closing. And I don't know how we're going to raise sales tax. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would care to speak on the budget or have any questions concerning the budget? Tim Allen, 408 South 7th Street. I have a couple questions. On the uh, contingency, you're lowering the contingency? Yes. And you just had something happen this year that you never expected? Right. But the reason that last year's contingency was as high as it was is we had unfunded contracts coming up in negotiations, and we put the money in the contingency to pay for the increases that would be negotiated. We now have negotiated contracts and don't have to go into the contingency to pay those in 2001. Because part of this contingency that was here is the actual projection of the wages. All right, and the, the engineer, we were able to you're lowering the engineer by 48,000. Yes, we're not going to hire a city engineer. We took the position out of you're going to hire a service. Pardon? You're going to hire a service. Yes, as, service. as we need it. As you need it. If a project comes up where we need engineering services, we will hire out the engineering services rather than have someone on staff. Will that money come from the contingency or? There, there is money in there for outside, in, in the budget. This was just the position. There was, there's always been money in that budget 
for outside consultation. but I have a statement if you will allow me to uh, bring it around to the point that I want to finally make in the end. I'm not going to pick apart the budget and I'm not going to pick on any one particular item that you gentlemen are asking for more money to cover. But I'm going to ask some uh, rhetorical questions. You said that you went to some other cities to ask them about their payroll and their salaries so that you can bring up our people to that same level. I don't know what the cities were, Auburn, Rochester, Syracuse, Watertown, Messina, who knows, but they're not Fulton. Now, I want to know when you went to ask them about salaries, did you ask them about the ratio of police and firemen per capita? Did you ask them about their tax base, their school tax base? their property taxes? Did you ask them about their retail income, retail sales taxes? Did you ask them about their existing industry? Did you ask them about manufacturers, jobs, unemployment? Before we raise our salaries to match these other cities, do we justify having this kind of an income to our people if we're not making that kind of an income to justify it. In other words, are we bringing in enough money into this city to justify it? I'm here 35 years. 35 years ago, we had over a dozen factories in this city. I'm not gonna name them. You should sit down and think about it, and maybe you might get that into your mind as to what we used to have and what we've got now. We're down to two factories, Nestle's and Sealright and we're begging them not to take their ball and go home. And we'll give them anything. You want a street? We'll give you a street. If Broadway's in the way, we'll close it. Please don't go home. And the local managers are good residential people. They live here. They're neighbors. But decisions aren't made at the local level. They're made from corporations out of the state. When the bottom line doesn't give them what they want, they're closing. So what we have to do is start looking for some industry Miller doesn't impress me at all. Volony gets the taxes, it does nothing for Fulton. And the fact that we have downtown vacated, with the exception of a professional park. You might laugh at Disney, the Dizzy Block, but I remember the Dizzy Block being a very, very active downtown. Traffic was unbearable. Every single store was operating. We're down to a professional park. Doctors, lawyers, chiropractors, which are okay, but they don't pay sales tax. We need to bring in retail. You're making a big issue over Wilson Farms. Big deal. I don't care one way or another if they go in there. They're going to hire three people. And the three people are going to come from Burger King, McDonald's, and Arby's. So you're not going to gain anything. We don't need three employees. We need 300 employees. Nestle's bought up property because they needed parking. Three shifts going full time. We don't hear the sirens blowing anymore. It's shift changes. And the parking lot is half full because the people have been cut down. Departments have been closed. We have to do something before we give ourselves all these raises in payroll to justify it. 70% of the budget is payroll, which is absolutely ridiculous. Who is paying the other 30%? Without getting into the charts, we might have 5,000 homes in Fulton. Now, take away the tax free, tax exempt properties, federal, state, county, and city. Take away all the churches, take away all the social clubs, take away all the veterans who are getting tax exempt. What's left? A handful of people. And out of that handful of people, half of them are seniors paying for school taxes without having kids in the school. So who's gonna pay for all this? We're down to four industries in this county. Oswego County, the largest employer, Oswego County Opportunities, 18 million a year business with an $8 million payroll, that's two. 
three is our forty million dollar school system country club in itself people are waiting online to work for the fulton school system it pays well now we're going to have to add a fourth industry to that the city of fulton what's left we have the king in his court sitting in a castle and you've got the people from the school system as part of your guests living in your castle. And on the other side of the moat, we have welfare and fast foods. That's our choice. So who's making all the money and who's paying for all of it? I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, when you can justify your raises and justify the income and the payroll by saying to me, look at the income we've got coming in, I'll say, go for it. But I was told four and a half million dollars in sales taxes is coming next year. From where? And one more thing. Well, there'd be more than one more thing. Um, we're allowing people to open residence to business. They're turning their homes into residence. I mean, into businesses. We have empty stores downtown. We should be forcing the people to open their retail in those empty stores instead of turning residential homes into businesses, forcing downtown. Another thing, we have this here thing built on Pollution Lake, and it's gonna have a souvenir shop. It's gonna sell cups, coffee cups with Fulton on it. Can you tell me who's gonna come from Cape Cod and Virginia Beach to buy a cup that says Fulton? Where is Fulton? That money should have been put into my own personal complaint, sewer systems. Well, I was told it was a grant. Senator Wright gave us the money. It's not from the taxpayer. Well, did it come from Senator Wright's personal checking account? When he gives me $50,000 from his checking account, I'll say it's not tax money. But that's tax money from the pork barrel, regardless who put it in there. So we should have gotten a grant for our dilapidated sewer system, and I wouldn't have had what I had last week. Now, you can't tell me that we don't have sanitary sewer problems. John Lincoln, was I to your home on First Street for a backed up sewer? Yes, you were. How long did the smell linger in your cellar? Uh, that lingered. Twice. Hey. And your house on Chestnut and Genesee, uh, Genesee? Yep. I was there, what, three times? Uh, at least backed up sewers. Right. Mr. Weston has backed up sewers in his house on Third Street at one time. The people before you had it six times. I've been in the city for 40 years on plugging sewers. Don't tell me that the problem is just storm sewers. It's sanitary sewers. I had, excuse me, crap in my cellar, not rainwater, 14 inches of it. And if the code enforcement was out there telling these people to put in grease traps, we wouldn't have half the problems we've got. Mains are backing up in this city. Some of them are as much as 80 and 100 years old. We should be putting that money into the sewer system. And then we won't be paying people for washers and dryers and all the losses that they've had from backed up sellers. They're out there. I know they're out there. And as far as downtown, before I forget, I'd like to know who the insane person is that is pushing a 481 bypass around our downtown. We're trying to get businesses downtown, and we're talking about bypassing 481 so the customers can get to Oswego and North Syracuse faster. You want to know why I think it's stupid? One word. Phoenix. As soon as 481 went around Phoenix, they killed that village. I sat outside a doctor's office and there were eight stores. One had a pizza shop, one had a part-time tanning lotion uh, or salon, and the other six were empty. That's what you'll do to Fulton with a 481 bypass. Like, we don't have enough trouble already. So what I want us to do is to quit fooling around with this uh, operation of Oswego County, who the only th jobs they found were for themselves. You gave them $10,000 for their payroll, they could have went into the sewer out in front of my house. And what did they do for the 10 grand? I don't see very much being done, except for a couple of fast food joints. $5 an hour ain't gonna do it, gentlemen. We need $15 an hour, we need three and $400 jobs, not these little minimum wage places. So stop worrying about Wilson Farms 
because the guy's only going to sell $2 gallons of milk after the supermarkets close anyway, so who cares? And you want to mount the gasoline pumps? We have an ethylene manufacturer going in at Miller's. You got five acres of gasoline going out there. Nobody's worried about that. So let's get real. Let's get real. You're going to have a bunch of field people out here angry with the lords that are living on the hill. And I'm a little tired of living in a place that has nothing to boast about but fast foods and welfare because I'm not part of the four big industries in this county. You can take all the raises you want, justify it to me, and tell me that our income will cover and justify your payroll that's going out of this place. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Is there anyone else who would care to speak on it? Cab, 317 South 4th. Uh, I just hope that everybody takes and listens to what he just said. I was born and raised in Fulton, the old Fulton Hospital. I'm 44 years old. I've been here all my life. And uh, I think he explained everything about as good as it needed to be heard. And uh, I just want to add one thing. Uh, I think that uh, if it's possible, with our high dollar pumpers, our American La France fire trucks, I really don't think that we need to have them on the street when they're not needed to go to a motor vehicle accident uh, with the heavy salted ro roads and stuff that, uh, like I said, it, it just isn't needed. Uh, we got rescue for that. We don't need our pumpers out there. Thanks. Thank you. Fran Foley, State Street, Fulton. I have some concern about the uh, health benefits. It's such, it's one of our highest costs that we have. And uh, I don't think the employees are paying, I know you have negotiated a lot on them, but they're only paying about 5%. This, the, the year 2001, it will be 5% of premium. That was mm -hmm. this the first year that they have paid anything. Which was only about $50 a month for an employee. Is that about right? Yeah, in, in that neighborhood. Anyway, it isn't very much. Myself on um, Medicare, we pay $50 a month, and that's on a frozen, not very high salary. So that's one of the things I think that somehow or other that could be negotiated so that we can have them pay more, a fair share, and that isn't a fair share, 5%. No, but it, it is an entry level. We were lucky to get that. I know, but... I don't know how else you're going to be able to do it. In the future, somehow it in the future, the, the reality is going to have to set in. And there, another item is sick pay. Now, is their sick pay accumulated? The unions? Yes. It depends. It depends on the union. It they negotiate that. Okay. So that all the employees don't. It isn't the same thing for like each. Different. No. Each one is different. Because we don't want to be in this um, situation like a Swaco is, where their sick pay is accumulated, and when they quit or retire, they're getting about $46,000 in sick pay that they didn't use. Mm -hmm. Well, sick pay is wonderful. You need it. You have to have it, and you have to have a, um, an accumulation where you do get a major sickness to cover it. But it should be limited so that it doesn't go into this amount like that. And if you don't use it all over a um, minimum or maximum number, you just don't have it. You don't, uh, you lose it. This, uh, if you're not sick, that's good. Y yes, it is, definitely, I agree. Uh, the, without seeing the contracts that, that these people went out under in Oswego, uh, I can't say for sure, but I can almost assure you that our sick pay uh, program that's in the contract is definitely different from Oswego's. Mm -hmm. I really wish you would look into that to be sure of that, because that involves a great deal of money when you have several people retiring and accumulate that money. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Is there anyone else that cares to speak? What I want to speak about is the uh, raises for the department heads. Yes. Okay, and I wrote this down, so you just let me read it. Sure. A uh, great book starts out by saying that it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And for Fulton, I guess that saying, that saying pretty much tells us where we're at. This budget and those that are followed do say that it is the best of times. Is it? Having served the city as an employee and as an alderman at the Sixth Ward, I know that the budget, that budgets are most made up of actual figures and I am sorry to say, projected figures. Naturally, the actual figures come from personnel. What you need to provide services like police, fire, and public works with payroll, insurance, and vacations, etc., being the major expenses. The projected figures are made up based on things like sales tax, growth in industry, and other projections that you hope will happen. The problem that I have with this budget is that you're giving the taxpayers a full and expense, these raises, to the department heads. They will be with us forever, in good times or bad. Can this council justify increase, increases based on inequities that have nothing to do with both, but are based on what other people in similar positions in other cities are being paid? The taxpayers of Fulton should not be responsible for the economy or of negotiations in other cities. Before you pass this budget, I hope that each and every one of you on this council will ask yourself this question. Do we pay for these bills in the worst of times? Thank you. Thank you. And just to give you a little bit of information, uh, there were some of the department heads that did receive large increases over the life of their agreements. 14% of that increase was the increase of re increasing their hours from 35 to 40 hours that their individual departments went up instead of hiring new people. We don't have department heads that are not working department heads. Can I ask you when they cut the hours back to 35, from 40, it was 40 at one time? I have never seen it 40 hours for, for the offices here. It's always 35 since I've been here. I've been here 16 years. It's, it's been, it's been, and what the, the different offices were saying is they needed more people to get the work done. Instead of hiring more employees and paying more fringe benefits, we increased the hours of the city departments that were on 35 to 40 hours. But when you do that, you increase each person's salary by 14% without any raises. It's a 14% change from 35 to 40. But you reduce overtime that way and you don't have to hire new people and pay the full benefits with retirement and everything else by doing it. We thought this was the cheapest way of getting more work done and opening the offices longer for the ease of the public. So this had nothing to do with other cities or what? They, the, the council asked to have a study done as to what the other cities were paying. We got information from the Conference of Mayors as to what the other cities in the state, I believe was based on a 1999 study, and took information out of that in state cities of approximately the same size and gave them that information. But as I said, 14% of this is based on increasing their hours. If their offices are going to be open, they're 
have straight salary. They don't get overtime. 14% of the 28% increase. 14% of that. The other increase is based on the same percentages the union's got over the life of the contract. So that's, that's where the raises came from. For those that had their hours increased, their salaries increased. Is there, are there any other questions? I'd like to ask a question. You have a, a masonry crew coming in, you said, right? Yes. Okay, and they're going to repair the uh, storm drain rates? The catch basins, yes. Catch basins. Which is a good thing because we've had saw horses and uh, traffic cones on some of yes. things. They were dangerous. That's excellent. I had two put in on the corner of State and Third two years ago. My neighbor up the street was complaining about water. They paved it and put the water in front of my house. The water never reaches those two storm drains. What I said to you once, and it's the only way I can explain it to make it clear, you're going out and buying $150 lampshades with no light bulb in the lamp. It looks pretty, but it doesn't work. They have to do more than fix the grates. They've got to get down into the sewers right. where they're broken. Right, but right now, we don't have a crew that's doing this. So the crew that gets down in the sewers are the ones that are fixing. They've got to take the time to fix it. As far as I'm concerned, they should get the 40% raise and the desk jockey should get the 3%. Because the water and sewer department are out there in sub-zero temperatures, mud and ditches. They work. certainly are. But there's a broken sewer on Fort and Leach in front of my parents' home. It's been broken since I moved here 35 years ago. It's still broken. Not, not to argue with you, but I just checked with Roger Parsons. He checked with his crew. They fixed that last year. They did repair it? Yes, they did. Thank God. Okay. I applaud him. If, if, you, if, if you report uh, problems to me, Al, yeah. I'll pass them on and we'll get them fixed. We have a $170,000 truck that we bought. Beautiful yes. chrome and stainless steel. Yes. It's supposed to go up to 500 feet in cleaning capacity. Yes. That truck should be out every month or every six months in each ward doing maintenance, pre uh, preventative maintenance. If they know where the bad sewers are, and there are a bunch of plumbers in this city can tell you where they are, they should be out doing those first and then servicing the rest of the mains. We have the equipment. We should be using it. And I can tell you there are three in my ward alone that need cleaning. And we haven't regularly. had the manpower to do it. By putting this crew on to take care of the one project, then the people that are supposed to be doing that can do it. That's why we're doing it. And which crew will that be? The water and sanitation crew. Mr. Parsons said he's uh, on, on demand now. Well, he's, that's why we're putting the crew on. Hiring men that are going to get down and, and fix the sewers, not just the grates. Right. The, the, what the crew we're putting on is going to do the concrete work, which will allow the people that have been doing that now, along with everything else, to concentrate on maintenance and repairs. And let me say, if you give yourself increases, it's okay with me, provided you can show me where you can afford it. One. Two, don't cut our services. We don't want to give you more money and get less service. I don't want Example. to cut services at all. Example, Thursday, I watched the trash truck go by. I watched the man go through my trash. I don't live in Beverly Hills. So we don't have to be picking and choosing what trash they're going to take. I watched the gentleman. He picked up a flower and he put it back and started to walk away. And I went out and I said, what are you doing? He says, we don't take plastic flowers. I said, put the plastic flower in the trash and take the collectibles. He says, where are they? I said, they're under that white stuff. It's called snow. And I dug down and took out two bags of cans and bottles. He took them and threw them into the truck because he was angry. I made him do something he's getting paid for. That size, he's getting a raise now to do that. So don't pick and choose what you can pick up. It's trash, it's garbage, it's recyclable. I don't care what it is. But trash we, is trash. But we have different trucks that yeah, pick, four up, of them. pick up different four of them. items. Four of them. But what I'm saying is the truck that's all getting recyclables doesn't pick up the trash because you can't exactly. mix it. Exactly. That's a different truck. Right. That's and why. Yard waste is another truck. We have to do that. Newspaper is another truck. 
The guy that tars the street dries up and down in the snowstorm. He's out tarring streets, I don't know where. And then the guy that drives by my branches that's sitting out there for two weeks, he's not stopping to pick it up. Don't cut my services if you want more money. Give us more services and we'll give you everything you want. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Council that would care to speak on the budget. Yeah, I'd just like to ask John if he, uh, the way the budget is right now, John, if you took the salaries, uh, the contractual salaries are there. They're always there. They've been there since day one, and two of those units are governed by binding arbitration, so there's not too much we can do there. But as far as department head salaries and elected officials, those salaries come into line, say, with uh, the three percent that the unions got. What difference would it make in that budget? Do you have some kind of an idea there? Next to nothing. Understand that, John. The only thing what, what effect it would have on the budget? Yeah, I wanted to know what effect it would have on the budget. And although it sounds like comparing apples to oranges, most of us that are sitting here come from the private sector, and and uh, I'm a, a salaried supervisor, and I have a lot of people that work for me that make more money than me because they work more hours, and that doesn't bother me one bit. Do we really have to say to our department heads, you got to work five extra hours a week because your employees are? I mean, we can trust these people here to be here another hour a day without a department head. I'm not offended because my, peop my, my men work more hours than me and make more. Yeah, it doesn't offend me one bit. And the thing of it is, the private sector's paying for this. If the department heads were not doing anything but pure supervision, I would say yes, that would be a waste. But they're not. Every department we ha department head we have is a working department head that gets right in with everybody else in their department and works hard to get the job done. Ken. John, what did you think? I mean, using rough numbers. Well, I understood the stand, Mike, with the, with the hourly, because when they get a 3% raise, when they work more hours, you got to pay them, you know. Oh, we have the same thing. To answer Ron's question, what do you think? Department heads roughly 50, admin another 15, so 65 from 218 is about a quarter of it. So 7%, a quarter of that would be, without those increases, Ron, you'd be looking at 5% instead of 7. I, I mean, using we rough numbers. At, uh, if the impact of the mayor and council salary and department head increase. Proposing to take the, I'm not proposing not giving them a raise. Right. Well, the only thing I should no say raise. is that the department has got no raise. This number could be 5.6. Yeah. I know the council. Some of you guys took your hearing. Perceptions, everything, Bob. People. Oh yeah. yeah. People that are out in the, in the manufacturing sector, both hourly and salary, are getting around 2.83 percent. I mean that's. That's the standard. And what I've heard, and for some reason they don't come to public hearings, I don't know why, because I've heard a lot about this, but they're paying for it. And it's, and it's hard to understand why it would be the employees, which they consider us employees, me, uh, the Chamberlain, the city clerk, the mayor, they consider us our, their employees. And, they, and, and the way it's put to me is, why does the employee get more than the, the boss? You know what I mean? The, the employer. The, the biggest. And I can understand that. I can relate to. If you look at this 440,000, uh, the biggest portion of this is not the mayor's salary increase. No, I understand. John, I know where the bulk of the money comes, and I'm not pointing a finger that way at all. And I also understand that the council. When you looked at a 73% increase over a three-year period, it was a very small dollar figure compared to other increases. But 
when you put a percentage to something, you can dramatize it. Anybody can make, very much. make numbers work. 73% over three years, yeah, that's true. But the council and the mayor haven't had a raise in 10 years. I understand. And this would be over a 13 year I, period, so yeah. it's a lot less than 73. I understand that. And that, that dollar amount was $16,000 of that 440. Yeah. What I'm saying is perception is a lot to the public. Sure. I mean, they're, the people are out there and they're looking and saying, Jesus, what well, we're getting and this is what's happening. A, a, even if it's a, you know, if, if it only come down to 5%, I mean, I, I think we should look at it. Of course, Mike's saying that uh, his department heads are working department heads, so if he's got hourly people here out, stuff in the clerk's office and the chamberlain's office, he's going to have his department heads do the same thing. That's what they're Basically. Yeah. Ron, there's nothing, another thing. Any time someone in the city retires, we really scrutinized that position to see if we can combine some things. We've done it uh, with code. When we're looking at the city engineer, we're reducing the number of, of people and asking the people that are here to do more. I understand. Well, I know that. I'm not saying we don't have dedicated employees because you know, I've seen it. Does. I, yeah, I know. But I also know we look at what we need and what we don't need. Sure. And I think we, when we go to the conference of mayors again, we ought to be looking at everything we're doing in this city and see if we need to be doing it. See if there's overlap of services or if we're competing with the private sector on things. And if we are, then we need to do something about it. I agree. In some areas, we should be competing with the private sector. cheaper and save a lot of money. I mean, it's one thing that we've looked at. I know that uh, hopefully that'll happen somewhere in the future, but. Well, I, I'll tell you this. I've seen sidewalk crews come and go over the years here, and you could never come anywhere close to getting the volume of sidewalks done with the crew unless you hired another 30 people. And once you do that. They don't have a huge crew doing these sidewalks. They're going to make the contractors doing it. Come on, how many have they got? They, they have quite a few out this year. They have a lot of them doing it, and, and once you hire people, then you've got benefits and, and raises, and, and you're there forever. And it's very hard to, to lay people off. I mean, that's the reality of it, and that's what, what we're looking at here. The only place it happens is in industry, in the private sector. When you see the jobs cut, I mean, there are certain things I shouldn't even be talking about, but I, when I look at where I work, which is Nestle's, uh, and the bottom line in, in that industry and any industry, when they need to make up the bottom line, they do it with jobs, and jobs that pay good enough to buy a home or a car or a vehicle. We get a little tax increase here. We did this power for job things, which was the greatest thing on earth. And next year, with all the foolishness and monkeying around that they've done to save money, is our power bill is going to be almost a million dollars more. So now we'll add another seven or eight thousand dollars in taxes, hundred thousand dollars in a water bill. The parking lot's going to get emptier. And these are people that are buying homes to pay these taxes. I'm one of them. So whether it's 1% or 2%, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It really is. And that's just us. I don't know what it's doing to Dean Foods. I don't know what it's doing to sell right. Uh, of course, some of them have site pilot agreements, so it don't affect them. But the, the straw's breaking the camel's back. You know what I'm saying? It's. Uh, I may not be able to. I may may not be keen of me to disclose this, but while sitting in this uh, executive sessions, it's very frustrating, and I understand there's a lot of negotiation that has to go along with the union, that, but it's very frustrating. I'm not pointing fingers here at the council, but it's frustrating. I'm pointing at the state that we hear that arbitrators are going to come in, they're going to make a decision, and really stick it up our butt as taxpayers as to what we can pay or can't pay a city employee. Very frustrating situation, and that's where these numbers are coming from. That's a fact. That's a fact of money. That's where they're coming from. And when we can't say, no, we only want to give a 1% or 2% pay increase, 
and no, an arbitrator's gonna come in here, and he's gonna force a three and a half percent increase down your throat, and you're gonna like it. That's a very frustrating situation. That's right. And that's actually, what burns my butt as a taxpayer. It is, and it I'm happens. I'm a taxpayer sitting on this council, just like anybody sitting in, that, out in, in the council, in the uh, assembly here. And it is very frustrating. I, I, I know exactly where they're coming from when it comes right down to nuts, nuts and bolts. No, I think the mayor did a good job with the... With the, the mayor, with I thought you right now, she did a great job excellent with job negotiating with these contracts yep. and with these unions. Uh, they really, I'm not even, I don't even want to say what unions, but they tried to stick it to us big time. Okay, and, and I'll tell you right now, we're know. lucky to get what we're getting out of the budget yeah. right now. Yeah. But well, as a taxpayer, you're lucky you're getting it. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. The um, masonry crew that you're talking about, if they're going to do sidewalks and their salaries are included in wages and their materials are included in materials and equipment, are we going to see a decrease in the paving budget? Because historically I've taken the sidewalk money from paving. Right. No. No, this, this concrete crew is going to work right be designated to work on catch basins until all the catch basins are repaired. Okay. So when I give you my list of 250 more sidewalk slabs, they're not going to do it. It's they, still going to no, come no. out of the pavement. They're, they're not right. going to be able to do it. Okay. Until we can get the catch basins done. If we can okay. get the catch basins caught up, then they will have the expertise to work on the sidewalks. Okay. One, one thing we have to, to look at Going back to what Ron said, last year we paid $180 a slab to put a sidewalk in. Right? That was double from the year before. Now, so so I don't want to get to when it gets to the point where we can do it cheaper, then we got to look at doing that. So that's exactly what I was saying earlier. It's almost to the point right now where it's not they're not competitive when they when they bid for these uh, these sidewalks. It's getting almost close to the point where it'd be cheaper to find. Either somebody else or do it ourselves. But we have to look at that. One of the things we're getting the bids out earlier, whatever it takes, whatever, you know. That would help a lot. Uh, we looked at, even when I was on the council, we looked at garbage pickup, privatizing that, letting each homeowner pay for their own. But when we put a pencil to it, we found out that the city can do it cheaper than somebody who comes in, and at least the residents have control over that cost rather than some somebody from the outside coming in and costs going up exorbitantly. And at least we have control over it now. People can come and express their opinions. Thank you guys. Anyone else? I just had I had a, a gentleman call me earlier this evening. His concern was pretty much uh, what has been expressed tonight. Uh, he was asking about the salaries as to uh, making sure that our salaries were um, being compared to uh, municipalities that were very much like ours and with the similar uh, situations. And he also was concerned about uh, us looking at the median income in the city of Fulton and using that as somewhat of a barometer also. So he just wanted me to share that with the uh, council. See, the thing is, you go right back to falling back into arbitration with the state, and the state mandating what you're going to pay and what you're not going to pay. The state has roadblocked this city from making advancements and progress since at least I've been on this council. We tried to come up, look at the, look at the, the program, we, the pilot program we tried to come up with for, you know, buying some of the multi-unit properties, converting them back to single families and giving tax breaks, and the state steps in our way and roadblocks us. The, another example. The governor just vetoed legislation on that and sent it back to the, uh, the sponsor to work with one of the state department departments because he said, did you see that was yeah. technically flawed or something like that? And he sounded in his veto message as if if they work the flaws out of this, that he is definitely in favor of and will sign the legislation. So th they are working to uh, working to do that. That's one of the uh, uh, agenda items for the conference of mayors. Anyone else? If there's no other input, oh. Entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move it. I'll second. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Next item. There is a resolution adopting the budget for fiscal year commencing January 1, 2001, making appropriations for the conduct of city government and establishing the rates of compensation for officers and employees subject to negotiations as noted on the salary schedule is attached here too in the budget packet. Whereas the governing bo board has met and considered the tentative budget, has conducted a public hearing thereon as required by the city charter, now therefore be it resolved that the tentative budget as amended and revised and as in hereafter set forth is hereby adopted and that the several amounts for the objects and purposes specified and the salaries and wages subject to negotiations in schedule two of that budget shall be and hereby are fixed at the amount shown therein effective January 1, 2001. Do I hear a motion? I'll move it. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. We have the tool. Do we know who it was? No, I didn't hear it. Alderman Who was opposed? I was a negative. And you were. Okay. Yes. Motion is carried. Four to two vote. Motion is carried. Next item. Resolution directing the tax levy of the City of Fulton for the year 2001. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Fulton has heretofore adopted the City of Fulton budget for the fiscal year 2001 and has heretofore adopted a resolution making appropriations for conducting the City of Fulton government for the fiscal year 2001. Whereas the amount of taxes to be levied in the City of Fulton for the city government purposes for the year 2001 has been established in the amount of $3,745,863. Therefore be it resolved that the said sum of $3,745,863 for the city government purposes for the year 2001 being the same hereby is directed to be levied and raised by general tax upon all taxable properties according to the valuation on the assessment roll for the current year in accordance with section C46 of the city charter of the city of Fulton. Do I hear a motion? I'll move it. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Sir, motion's carried, Your Honor. Thank you. Next item. Resolved that the three-year contract between Brandano Displays, Syracuse, New York, and the City of Fulton for Christmas decorations of the City of Fulton, New York, commencing November 15, 2000, and expiring January 15, 2003, is hereby approved as per attached. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, Mayor, are those going to be included, the ones that we've got down there? Yes. That looks pretty good. Yes. That dressed up downtown very nicely. Is there a motion? Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item. Whereas the city clerk was authorized and directed to advertise for sealed bids in his office. <coughs> Honor before December 19th up to 9 a.m. and to be publicly open at 9.15 that same day in the council chambers on the second floor for a timber sale at Great Bear Farm in accordance with specifications prepared by Four Town Incorporated. Whereas the bids were opened and read as follows. Black Creek Lumber, $15,575. Frank Pitcher Logging, $13,888. Clary Logging, $16,400. Kutcher logging, $18,100. CNY lo logging, $15,251. Press Forcon Incorporated by their letter dated December 19th has recommended that the bid be awarded to Kutcher logging in the amount of $18,100. Whereas the Common Council would agree with the recommendation. Now therefore, it be resolved, the bid of Kutcher in the amount of $18,100 is hereby accepted and awarded to Kutcher logging. I'll move it. 
Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. Next item. <coughs> Resolved that the clerk is authorized and directed to advertise for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, January 16th at 7 p.m. relative to a zone change request submitted by Community Development Agency for a change of zone from R2 residential to R3 residential for their property located at 202 Oak Street for the purpose of constructing the senior housing project called Oak Street Manor. Alderman Sahaski. Yes, I, before I, I would like to make a motion to accept this, but I'd like to say something before this. Uh, the zone change of Oak Street School uh, would just be simply that the zone would be changed just for the school property. The, outside of that property, there is no, there's no change. It's just for that, that single property. I'd like to make that motion. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Whereas the city has been the record owner of the building located at 201 203 United Street, formerly the Lamplighter, since April 29th, 1994. Whereas said property is in disrepair and in the need of serious renovations, and there are no plans by the city to use the property for any purpose. Whereas the city previously advertised this property for sale at public auction and received no bids. Whereas the Oswego County Opportunities has expressed an interest in purchasing said property, repairing it, and using it for various purposes. Whereas a project intended by Oswego County Opportunities will be facilitated by being done through the Fulton Community Development Agency because of the availability of CDBG funding. Now therefore, be it is hereby re resolved that this Common Council hereby finds that said property currently s serves no public purpose and a private sale is determined to be in the best interest of the city, such that in accordance with the city code, section 4-3, said property need not be sold at public auction and is further resolved that the city hereby agrees to sell said property to Fulton Community Development Agency for $1 and the mayor is hereby authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to effectuate said sale. Do I hear a motion? I'll offer that here. I'll second. second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Next item. <coughs> Resolved as subsection 16558, Schedule 14 of the Vehicle and Traffic Ordinance of the City of Fulton, entitled Parking Prohibited at All Times, be amended to read as follows. Add, name a street, Broadwell Avenue, the west side from Oak Street to Chestnut Street. Add, Dennis Shea Place, on the west side from Chestnut Street to Cedar Street. Alderman Sahaski. Yes, I would like to move this, but I'd like to make a statement, please. Uh, the no parking at all, uh, I believe we're just going to try this, uh, see if it works. Uh, and um, we do have a safety issue there. We have snow plowing problems there. We have trash pickup problems there. Uh, the, the, we've met with the neighborhood of Denishe. And, um, and I know we spoke with them in mayor of, of possibly in the, uh, in the springtime uh, that we would try to uh, open up some parking spaces. Uh, down around yes. by the park and by the railroad. So uh, the, the, our main concern right now is safety. So uh, we, would, we would push this to this point and then wait to the springtime and see how this thing works on a trial basis and, um, and, and then work it from there. The only other request that I did have is that, uh, that uh, signs of no parking at all go up there after the holidays. Because a lot of those people are going to have people visiting there. We can do that. <laughs> I mean, we, we can do it next year at, certainly. at the holidays. Please. Uh, <laughs> so that everyone understands what the problem is, this is the first year we've had this problem. We don't know why. Maybe they did something different at the high school this year. But we have 26 homes on our block. Presently, there are high school students parking there on both sides of the street. We can't get plowed. We, our visitors can't park in the street. We have no room whatsoever. Um, the school says they're going to try to help us. We've done surveys during September and October, and during those times, high school has had as many, uh, lowest number, 
57 vacant spark parking spots at the high school, the highest being 69. We have 30, 32 students parking on the street when we feel they should be parking at the high school. It's safer for them, it's safer for us. They've been and out of our driveways trying to get the post to spot because high school discourages juniors from parking there. But if they have the spots, and we've proven that they do, even though we know it's an honor normally held for the seniors, they should kind of flex the rules a little bit and let these kids park there. And if that's done, we would have no need for no parking signs on our street, other than maybe five nights a year when there's a high school event. It is a safety problem right now. We used to have no parking signs when the school buses used to go both ways on our street, and they do not do that anymore. They all use cedar and chestnut. But it is a real problem, and we think that anyone with any pull with a school board should uh, talk to Mrs. Stewart and see if she couldn't let these children park over there. It should be. Be a little more flexible. Can I ask a? She mentioned at the at a meeting we were at that um, they had well another problem is they have sixty some parking spots reserved for visitors. This is outrageous. We only have twenty five to thirty kids that want parking spots. They never have sixty seven visitors at one time over there. So we hope that we could. Work before spring, all these kids are now going to be parked in, 13, in front of 13 houses on one side of our street. So you're going to have 28 cars parking in front of 13 homes. Those people on that side, of, well, none of our street is going to be able to have any anyone parked there. Visitors, period. It's going to really be a problem. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, in high school, Ed, can you take your car off school grounds for lunch? Not oh, many of those cars leave at lunch, though. So. Okay. And most of them are there. So I used to park across the street from my high school, too, because they wouldn't let you drive off. But you could walk off, get in your car, and leave. Most and close lunch. start to come at quarter after seven, and are usually gone by three. But not very many leave at noon for okay. lunch. So we hate to see our street with no parking signs on, and it's going to increase the problem for the other side of the street. I hate to see them put up signs, take them down, you know, but I think you will get a lot of flat. Yes, it's going to decrease the safety problem right now, but it's it's only going to add well, to the problem for all the people on the other side of the street. That is, we're looking at the safety issue right now. We want to make sure that we can get uh, I realize that. Uh, uh, public safety vehicles down there as we need them and that that is what we are looking at we are going to continue to work with the with the school i just think we've been meeting about three weeks now and i don't there hasn't been anything done really and maybe they're really not going to do anything and one question that i that arose yesterday was maybe they did something different this year because we haven't had this problem maybe they didn't give out as many parking spots as they did last year that's a possibility. I really There's don't know. There's something there that's causing it all of a sudden. But we are going to work, especially in the spring, to try to provide that's an area, an area where they can where they can park off street uh, closer to the school. But, but uh, again, if the school does have the spaces, and we can't, as residents, see any reason why they can't allow them to park there. Well, if they get even if they're allowed to park there, it's their choice to park on your street, unfortunately. We can't stop that. I realize that, but you heard Mrs. Stewart say they discourage juniors from driving to school, and I think that's where the bulk of the problem is. That, that might be a problem, but we will con continue the discussions with the, with the school officials. But hopefully before school. Oh, yes. I, yes. Thank you. Yes. I think we, we have a we have a start here, and our, our biggest issue right now is the safety issue. And I would like to uh, propose this resolution on a temporary basis that we could 
past that until we look into other things? Well, is that, is if, that if we just pass this, it'll go on the books, and then if we want to modify it later, we'll put through okay. a resolution to modify it. That's fine. I'll okay. second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Resolve the city clerk's report for November 2000, the amount of $5,779.85 is hereby received, approved, and placed on file. Motion? I'll move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The next item. Resolve that the hotel bed tax recommendation is presented by to the Common Council for fiscal year 2001 are hereby approved as per attached. Alderman Weston, would you um, care to discuss this? You're on that committee. Sure. <coughs> Just recent, recently, the mayor appointed uh, Barry Ostrander, our recreation superintendent, to this uh, committee, and his input has been especially uh, uh, productive because we have so many functions that come into our city that uh, uh, go into our War Memorial Community Center Etc. So uh, the the committee has has met and uh, allocated the funds as indicated to the council. Yeah. A couple of the changes uh, are uh, to the YMCA swim meet and also the soccer fest. Just felt that these uh, these two functions would uh, bring a lot of different people in from different areas. They, and they they do bring a lot of people into the city. And they use our uh, our hotels, our restaurants and uh, strictly beneficial, so the more that we can promote those uh, particular activities, the better off for all, for all of us. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. The motion is carried. I post this every year. Does anyone in the audience have any other business to bring before the council? I am. Uh, my name is Jim Pisano, 85 Worth Street. I was just wondering, I saw something about Great Bear on there. That's what caught my attention. I was wondering what the uh, public use of that property is as far as cross country skiing, biking, hiking. Dog walking. Yeah, I see no trespassing signs everywhere over there yet. I see a lot of cars over there, and I don't see any reason why people can't use A lot of people were parking there using as a drop off point for their cars. Yeah, a lot of people were parking there unloading their bikes, too. But well, going back in there. Uh, te I mean, technically, it is posted, and I, you know, I've, I've been back right. there with the uh, water commissioner, who, who's the one that controls it. And his position is we don't really have the manpower or the time to keep everybody off there, but what's very troubling are motorized vehicles, which right, are right, very tough that. to control because snow. Mobiles and four wheelers come in on the old, um, it's the old uh, trolley line. Tra yeah, yeah, trolley line. They come in from the south and the north, uh, and you can see if you go down there, you can see the trails. Right. But been the down bikes. Down I mean, we don't run out there. They don't. We don't have people run out there every day and stop people from using them. I but understand. By and large, they are not a problem as much as the motorized. Vehicle. Okay. So, I mean, people. I mean, it, it is all right to go out there and ski, and, and you're not going to have a lot of problems with that. Or is there some reason why we can't? Uh, I guess it's what, to my what knowledge, Jim, we've never some... had anybody arrested for it. Right. Put it that way. But but if you're asked to leave by an employee, I would. Yeah. Oh, I would. understand that. I mean, um, is there I don't anything? Think, uh, I, as long as there's a problem, I don't see. As long as there are no problems created, I don't see that happening again, except for the motorized vehicles. Okay. I mean, is there and anything in the future that might can't. open it up a little more publicly? Well, right because now it's we're in a real nice area. Well, I know, but right, right now we're in the, in the down middle down of a three or four year long term logging operation. That's right. part of why it was on right. here tonight because we, we had four kind going a couple years ago and give us a long range plan. So until that's accomplished, I don't not quite sure what a water long long range plan is. I mean, it's a sense of area because we we have wells there. So any development would have a significant environmental well, issue. development, just, you know, just for use. I know that a lot of the um, state parks and stuff up north, I mean, they get used by people all the time and they don't have any problems at all. Right. Well, the, the, it's not a matter of having a problem. We used to, there's a lean-to back in there. We used to have the scouts go back in. Right. But one of the things uh, the, uh, the people were concerned with was contaminating the aquifer. Oh, sure. I, and, I can and understand that. You gotta, that you gotta, is, you gotta. that's why it was posted, is to protect the aquifer. Okay. Uh, so a lot of uh, people, or, and I wouldn't say a lot, but some people, I guess, do go back in there and do Dude. bicycle back in there and do ski back in there in the wintertime. Right. And uh, I haven't heard of any problems developing there. Okay. Uh, can we give anybody permission? Not right now. No. Okay. How about later? Maybe. Well, that's a, that's a possibility. <laughs> if we can find a way to... to uh, 
allow it without the, the contamination. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Anyone on the council? Mayor, I do real quick. Uh, I just handed out to the council a nuisance abatement memo that was sent to me by the police chief regarding a property in my neighborhood, Mary Lou Knoll, the infamous Mary Lou Knoll. Uh, there are, in the, since January of this year, there are 18 separate incidents on this in this article from the police chief. Several arrests, and I think it's time that, as far as I'm concerned, there should be no more second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances for Mary Lou Knoll. It's time to shut her down. Shut it down, put the boards on the windows for a year, and let her sit on a vacant building. The neighbors are sick and tired of the dogs, of the fighting, of the threats, of the fornica <coughs> fornication alongside the riverbank, of, of whatever else goes on, drug dealing. There have been, not mentioned in this, uh, in this uh, memo, is there were three other reports in the newspaper just recently of drug dealing at the property, okay? People would drive up, sell drugs to the inhabitants, and then drive away. Uh, Santiago Rodriguez, who was now in jail, used to reside there. There were problems in the neighborhood from him. And this is over the past 10 years that this property has been an absolute menace to society. And I, I, as far as I'm concerned, if Judge Roy Bean was on this case, Mary Lou Noel wouldn't get the cage with the bear. She would be hung. And I, I think we should just get, it's time to shut it down. <laughs> Is that what's being done? I don't know. No, I don't. really don't know. They evicted the tenants, these tenants here that were mentioned at the top of the letter. Yeah. But to me, that's, that's still not enough. Mary Lou Knoll has thumbed her nose at the city. She's the building code inspector in the town of Scriba. It's time that her lesson is long overdue. Of course. Long overdue. No, there should be no more money made on the city of Fulton at city taxpayers' expense in the city neighborhood. Yes. Junk cars, thousands of dogs, cats, and everything else let loose on the neighborhood. I, I'm just, and believe me, that I'm just speaking really not only for myself but for the neighbors themselves down there. They're, they're all, they're, I could bring them all in here. I could load the place up if you wanted me to. I don't think it's necessary. We have the tools to shut it down, and I think we should shut it down. We'll look into that tomorrow. We'll talk to the chief and okay. see. But I know that people either were evicted or they moved out. Yeah, but I think I, I really think that Mary Lou has had way too many second chances here. Way too many. It's time to shut her up. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I want to talk about this. Oh, yes. Uh, the, um, just so the council and the public knows, we went to court Friday on the uh, Lake Development Corp, otherwise known as Wilson Farms lawsuit. Um, first of all, I hope that you all had a chance to read my response to the lawsuit and, and the, the uh, defenses I put up. Um, the judge heard both myself and my opponent's arguments, and then he made his decision. Basically, he said, the only one issue he decided, which was the only one he needed to decide, was that the city did not place enough people on notice for our code. Our code requires the applicant themselves, plus properties within a 100-foot radius and some other properties within a 100-foot of those, depending on where they sit in relation to the street. Um, there were basically seven properties involved that were all owned by either the Collins or Fulton Builder Supply that were not notified. Our, uh, uh, codes, uh, our zoning inspector didn't feel that they, it was necessary, even though the strict reading of the code says that it is necessary. And I guess, for example, one of the properties was owned by Harlan Collins, and is he necessarily part of the zone change application? Maybe not. I mean, he certainly had a right to be notified. And there were a couple of other properties in question um, that may or may not have been within, within this radius, but the judge found that even with those seven properties owned by the Collins family, that was enough. And he said, uh, he re re reversed the decision that was made here that will be sent back. We need to get a, a written order. It's going to be prepared by their counsel. <clears throat> the judge will sign it. We'll get it back, and then we need to set another public hearing and have the proper notification. All the other issues that were raised in the papers, um, none of those were touched by the judge, so I really don't know what to we'll tell see. you as far as giving you guidance as to where we're going to go on those issues if, if it's uh, litigated again. I don't know. But I thought everybody should know. But this this whole situation is on hold until we get until we get the court order. We get the court order. Right. We'll okay. get the court order probably within a couple weeks, I would imagine. And uh, so basically, they have to reapply for a public hearing. 
Uh, they won't have to reapply for it. No, it'll actually be the court order will pretty much specify that we have to uh, set a new public hearing. Essentially what the judge is saying is the first one was a nullity because the proper notice wasn't given. Then obviously we will give the correct notice to the, to the people that, we'll give notice to the people that are required to be notified by our own statute and then have another hearing. Okay, very good. Okay. Anyone else? I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. standing place let the guiding light stream forth within the minds of men from the point of love let the hearts of all be filled let purpose guide the wills of men let power restore the plan that all may benefit from amen amen, amen. Mayor Stafford? Here. Alderman Lincoln? Here. Alderman Sahasky? Here. Alderman Weston? Here. Alderman Sherman? Here. Alderman Thompson? Here. Alderman Woodward? Here. City Attorney Hawthorne? Here. All present, Your Honor. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome the, uh, the folks from the uh, Neighborhood Advisory Committee and the uh, students from the eighth grade class that are going to give us a presentation tonight. Uh, Betsy Sherman Saunders is here from the chamber. She's on that committee, uh, and uh, she's going to introduce the program. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, Fulton Community. My name is Betsy Sherman Saunders, and I'm the Vice President of the Neighborhood Advisory Council. The Neighborhood Advisory Council is an organization that has existed for over six years now, and what we focus on is are different partnerships in creating projects that will build and enhance the Fulton community. One of our latest projects was designed by and created by eighth grade students. We're in the very beginning processes of this, this is by no means close to completion right now. We have two students here today, and this was unveiled at the Greater Fulton Chamber of Commerce's annual meeting two weeks ago. It's my honor to introduce you Kathy O'Brien, who is the assistant principal of the Fulton Junior High, and she's going to be introducing the project. Kathy? Thank you, Betsy. Uh, thank you again for inviting us this evening, and I hope that you enjoy the presentation. Before we begin, I would like to sincerely thank the members of the Fulton Chamber of Commerce and the Neighborhood Advisory Council for the generation of this project and support throughout it till now. Most especially I want to thank Betsy Sherman Saunders and Jeff Hodge, where's Jeff? Jeff's over there from the Neighborhood Advisory Council for their leadership and support. Uh, they have in a way become a part of our school community. I feel like we're almost family in a way. Um, <laughs> I hope that our school will become even more of a part of the community with this project, so I thank you. I would also like to thank the students that are here tonight and uh, the teacher that has really helped us with this, Mr. Brown. Thank you for really working very hard with the PowerPoint presentations that we have put together. Uh, he spent countless hours with the students on working on this, and uh, without him it would not be possible, and he's truly appreciated. And lastly, I want to introduce to you Hillary Marks and Joe Clark, two of our eighth graders. And uh, unfortunately, Liz Beasley could not be here tonight because she is sick. Um, and Hillary is kind of, and Joe has taken over with her part of it. So without these two students, truly, they represent what I feel the school and the community would want from them. Leadership, commitment, and talent, and, and humor, which uh, they have a lot of. And I really thank them, too. So without further ado, we'll start, and I will turn it over to Hillary.
It was your job. <laughs> um, yeah, sit on my lap. <laughs> this year, the Greater Fulton Neighborhood Advisory Council and the eighth grade students at Fulton Junior High School teamed up to improve Fulton's future, show things we are proud of, identify community improvements, and get the community involved in making Fulton a better place to live, work, and play. The eighth graders became involved because we're at an ideal age where we are still objective in our opinions. We are becoming aware of how important it is to be involved within the community, and this is a good place to start so that five years from now, when we are high school seniors, we can see our vision become a reality. Through doing this project, I personally have realized that even being as young as I am, that I can still be involved and help to make a difference within my community. Mrs. O'Brien. The Fulton School District has written performance standards for its students in eighth grade. The standard most important for this project is individual and civic responsibility. We expect our eighth graders to contribute to the community by giving of their talents and skills that will benefit our society and promote responsible behavior. Our eighth graders have, because of this project, been involved in several activities. An election was held for the slogan that would capture the theme of this project, which you will see later after this project will, will unveil. Also, they have analyzed issues that face the community by taking photos throughout the community that they were proud and sorry of, which you will also see in this presentation. And hopefully, they take pride in our school and our community from this project. Back to Hillary. Today we are introducing to you our school's vision and hope for this community. Our slogan is, dream, believe, succeed, make Fulton's future reality. This slogan states that you must dream to believe, and if you believe, you can succeed. And together, we can make Fulton's future a reality. In order to select a project and come up with ways to improve the community, we went through a process of collecting information that included writing letters to editors of the Fulton Patriot and the Valley News, interviews with community members, taking photos of Prouds, and Saris of Fulton. In the selection of photos for a PowerPoint presentation, this process helped us learn more about the community. It was probably the first time most students my age have been asked, asked to do something for our community. My favorite part was the development of a PowerPoint presentation. This presentation, which was put together by seven students under the leadership of Mr. Brown, shows where we think our community is going. Here's our presentation.
After every student saw the PowerPoint presentation, we the eighth graders participated in focus groups to select a community project that would make a difference in Fulton. There were 15 focus groups that were held over three days. We selected projects based on the level of impact and the degree of difficulty. We selected five projects and as a class voted on one to focus on. Number five, promoting the community. We need to promote Fulton as a place to live, work, and do business. Number four, improve roads and sidewalks. These roads and sidewalks are unsafe. We need to reinvest in our community. Number three, lake and nature trail. Our lake is beautiful. If we had a nature trail, more people will enjoy its beauty. <coughs> Number two, neighborhood cleanup. Some of our homes are run down and give Fulton a bad appearance. We need to point out and repair those homes. And number one, parks and recreation improvement. Is this a safe place for children to play or eat? No, it is unattractive and we think it should be cleaned up. What's next? Neighborhood Advisory Council felt Fulton needed to be improved. They involved the Fulton Junior High School staff who agreed with NAC. They believed it should have been the eighth graders who improved Fulton. We, the eighth graders, thought that projects were the only way to get our points across. Finally, the eighth graders needed to get the community active. We need your help to make our dreams become reality. Before we get our plan into action, we need volunteers, fundraising, task force membership, and community support. And so, like our slogan says, we have to dream before we can succeed, but in order to make it a reality, we need you, the community, to help. to thank the eighth grade students and I know they have a special presentation right now that uh, that um, Arby's has and the students have to give to Arby's um, as they stated this is just the beginning this is just the start of a project they want to work on they want to be involved in this is something that they know there's a lot of work involved with they have to do fundraising and grant writing but they also need community support community help and uh, this is a great partnership between our community our education system and our business community and it'd be great to uh, get as many people on board with this as we possibly can I'm going to turn this over to Jeff Hodge Thank you. As you can imagine, we are going to need a lot of community support. One of those will come in terms of fundraising, and uh, we've been fortunate that many businesses have already jumped on board and helped the kids with some of the uh, costs of this project and in uh, preparation for future costs. Our largest sponsor to date, and we would like to honor them today, is Arby's, which has come on board with a $500 donation. And we would like to present this banner to Dave Letalian, the manager of Arby's, to uh, put in the store. This is Arby's supports the junior high and NAC dream, believe, succeed, make Fulton's future a reality. And I'd like to turn this over to Dave Letalian from Arby's, who has a presentation <laughs> for the mayor. I know. <laughs> Not a very good public speaker. And really all i like to say is I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this. Um, and the main reason I'm proud to be a part of this is because I, I myself have children who live in this town and attend the school here. And all the stuff that, that they just presented is like a lot of reality and it's, it's so true and it really, Fulton really is a great place I think. Um, that's really all I have to say. <laughs> This will definitely be 
put to good use. If I could just steal one more minute, one I promise. I told the mayor I was going to keep him here till 11, and I scared him. <laughs> and now he's thinking I'm serious. We have some yellow cards up here that are sign-up sheets um, for anyone who's interested in getting involved in any way, whether it means you just want to stay informed on what's going on, or if you want to become a volunteer, or if you'd like to be part of the fundraising, anything of that nature, please come up and take a couple of sheets if you'd like. They're right here at the front. Thank you very much. And thank you, council and mayor, for allowing us this time tonight. Well, you're entirely welcome, Betsy. Uh, I would like to thank the, the NAC and the, uh, the administration and the staff uh, at the junior high school, and especially the students. Uh, I was privileged to, uh, to be part of uh, some of the interviews uh, with the uh, eighth grade class, and uh, I found that to be uh, very interesting and very rewarding. And they asked some very uh, good questions. Uh, they're definitely thinking all the time. And uh, I am so proud to see them wanting to get involved in making our city a better place to live. Because if, if the students can think about it, it's going to help. Because this isn't just an adult problem. We need help from students and business and residents. Everyone working together is how we're going to make this a better place to live. And I thank you very much for all the work that you're doing. Next item. Resolved that Chapter 165 of the City Code is hereby amended as follows. Subsection 165.52, Schedule 8, Stop Intersections. Add. Stop sign on Car Corporal Barrett Drive, direction north at intersection of West Broadway. Stop sign on West 7th Street, south on West Broadway. Subsection 165.53, Schedule 9, yield intersections. Delete yield sign on West 7th Street, south at the intersection of West Broadway. Do I hear a motion? I'll move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Next item. Resolved that Chapter 165, Subsection 15550, Schedule 6 of the Vehicle and Traffic Ordinance of the City of Fulton entitled Prohibited Turns at, at Intersections be amended to read as follows. Add, name a street, Wendy's, Northwest Parking Lot Exit, Direction of Travel North, Prohibited Turn Left, all hours onto Route 3. Motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. If I could, Mayor, I'd just like to add something to this uh, a new regulation. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Michael Lichadello with Patrick Circle were involved in an accident uh, a short time ago at that, uh, uh, at that uh, point of entry onto Broadway. And uh, with their uh, suggestion, I brought it to the council's um, advisement, and uh, a traffic study was done. And Sergeant Romanchek agreed that this was a, a situation that was unsafe, and he uh, gave our a recommendation to us that we pass this resolution that uh, no left turn out of Wendy's onto Broadway. So that's the background. Thank you. Next item. Resolve the minutes of the council meeting held on January 16, 2001 are hereby approved. Motion? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Resolve the city clerk is hereby authorized and directed to advertise for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, February 20th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers 
relative to a proposed local law which would amend subsection 152-K of the Fulton City Charter entitled Demolition. Uh, Mr. Hawthorne, do you want to speak on this? Yes, Your Honor. This came from, uh, as you know, we have potential demolition or hopefully a demolition coming up soon. And uh, talking to the uh, Bureau Chief of Coastal Department is about that as well as demolitions in general. We realize that our law is a little vague as to what kind of restrictions can be put on a demolition permit. And we thought that certainly there should be an ability to put a duration on there, which is the first item that we request. And secondly, that in cer some circumstances, the Bureau Chief should be able to uh, require the performance bonds so that if the demolition is not finished, that the city could invoke that bond in order to get the demolition finished. So that's, <clears throat> those are the two items we propose changing the local law. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Resolved, the city clerk is hereby authorized and directed to advertise for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, February 20th, 7 p.m. relative to proposed zone change request from C1 Commercial to C2 Commercial for the property located at South 7th Street and Oneida Street. Do I hear a motion? I'll offer that. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Resolve the City Chamberlain is hereby authorized and directed to transfer $8,970 from the A1990 contingent account into the Police Department account for the purchase of a new copier in the Fulton Police Department. Said cost is to be charged as follows. $7,654 from contingent to A3120.2105 and $1,360 from A1990 to A3120.4557 maintenance account. I have a little bit of background on this. Uh, the copier that is now down in the police department was purchased, used from the Chamber of Commerce back when they were still up in the building at uh, Sealright. So uh, it was well used when we got it and uh, it has got a lot of miles on it and they just can't keep it running anymore. So that is the, the reason for this. It's finally given up the ghost. Do I hear a motion? I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Next item. Whereas the Fulton Community De Development Agency has required the former Oak Street School for the purpose of conversion to housing for lower income senior citizens. Whereas the CDA has, after public notice and competition, selected Edgemere Development Incorporation of Rochester, New York to redevelop the Oak Street property. Whereas the redevelopment will be financed with both public funds and private investment, including low interest loans and tax credits to be secured from New York State through a competitive process. Whereas Article 11 of the New York State Private Housing Finance Law enables local jurisdictions to grant real property tax abatement to such housing projects. Whereas a real property tax abatement will enhance both the project's competitiveness and its long-term viability by permitting rents to be maintained at affordable levels. Now therefore be it resolved to approve a payment in lieu of taxes agreement for the Oak Street Senior Housing Project set agreement to run for a term of 20 years or so long as the project shall remain affordable to lower income seniors, whichever is less, and be it further resolved that the payments under such agreement are as attached. Do we hear a motion? I'll move it. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item. Result that the mayor be authorized to sign the DOT NIDA drug testing agreement between the city of Fulton and AL Lee Memorial Hospital. Do we hear a motion? I'll offer that again. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Res that whereas the zone change request submitted by Mr. Francis Marbito for a change of zone from C1 commercial to C2 commercial for his property located at 1013 Emory Street and a portion of his property located at 1019 Emory Street 
with approximately 100 foot of frontage on the 1019 Emory, Emory Street parcel. Said parcels to be incorporated into one parcel and that the zoning of the entire parcel be changed from C1 to C2 commercial be referred to the Fulton Planning Commission for the recommendation. Motion? I'll offer that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item. Whereas the city clerk was authorized and directed to advertise for seal bids in his office, the Fulton Municipal Building, February 6th up to 2 p.m. and publicly opened at 2.15 p.m. In, in the council chambers, uh, located on the second floor for elevator renovations in accordance with specifications prepared by the Fulton Engineering Department. Whereas the city clerk opened the bid and read them aloud as follows. One bid being Thyssen Dover Elevator, $32,643. I'll therefore be it resolved that the bid of Dover Elevator in the amount of $32,643 is hereby accepted and awarded to Dover Elevator in the amount of $32,643, subject to the final review by the city attorney and the engineering department. Do I hear a motion? I move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item. Will we move to the discussion right. section. Yes. At the last meeting, when Mr. Jack Cooper was here in regards to a property tax issue. Is Mr. Cooper here tonight? I'll see. He's not here tonight. Do you have any paperwork? Is he not here to this? Uh -huh. Notified. Was he notified to be here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knew. He knew what was happening the next time the council meeting. Yeah, he was meeting. told when he was here to right. be discussed at this meeting. Right. I don't see him. Do you have any information on this, uh, well, Alderman Lincoln? Well, um, you know, I kind of went over with him what we had discussed with the council, and uh, I told him that it, probably wasn't going to fly, that it wasn't something we wanted to get into because it would open up a, what I would consider a Pandora's box. And uh, he, he understood. Okay. Do you need to speak on this at all? No. Okay. Since he's not here, does anyone care to enter a motion uh, to waive the fees and penalties on his taxes? Nope. Hearing none, I think this case is closed. Does anyone in the audience have any business to bring before the council? the alderman have any business to bring before the council? Well, of course I do. We know Bob does. Um, first of all, I, I want to also extend my congratulations to the young people, the eighth graders and their, all their teachers and all their support staff. Uh, the mayor, myself, and John Crook uh, saw the presentation at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, uh, but once again I was uh, enraptured in watching it and, and the, the wheels are turning and um, we certainly know the things that we've started. Um, many of the things that were discussed in the presentation are already in place. Uh, we certainly intend to work on all of those things. Um, everything takes time. Um, as been mentioned, it's going to be a cooperative effort between everyone to uh, make these things happen. So certainly I uh, uh, support uh, your position and what you want to do, and we certainly, I'm sure everyone up here is going to work extra hard to uh, uh, make your dreams come true. Uh, a couple of other things that I have, uh, not that I've got a, an audience tonight or anything, but uh, the council knows that I usually have something to say anyways. Um, New York State recognizes outstanding scholar athletes, and the Recreation Committee would like to recognize seven of our high school teams uh, that have achieved a 90 academic average. 
And as recognized before by New York State, they are the girls tennis team, the golf team, the boys cross country, girls gymnastics, swimming, boys soccer, and girls soccer. So as any um, uh, high school student knows, to participate in ath athletics and still uh, maintain those kind of averages, because these are all 90 and above. So they uh, certainly deserve our, our recognition and congratulations. Uh, second item, uh, once again, the community task force um, did an excellent job in presenting Snow Sculpture 2001. Uh, the community task force is an outstanding group of individuals that consist of school personnel, uh, people from churches, community groups, uh, the mayor is on that committee. It's a uh, committee that has really brought the community together and it's got a, a purpose to, to, uh, uh, to prove and they focus on respect and all the good things that we all want to have happen. So. Uh, I know the sculptures were great. Uh, there were 13 teams this year. I think there were five last year. Um, our own City Hall team came in second. Um, it was a, a very cold day. The wind off the lake uh, was fierce, but those people stayed down there on the lake for six, seven hours and made some beautiful sculptures. Um, I went down there Sunday and Monday and people were still driving by to see them uh, based on the reports that they're in the newspaper to. Uh, uh, to see what the sculptures look like. And they were outstanding. They, everybody did an outstanding job. Uh, of course, the rains came Tuesday, so some of the sculptures changed. <laughs> but also, we want to thank Commissioner Graham and the DPW crew for the work that they did down there. They, uh, they made all, it, uh, all the snow happen. Well, they didn't make it happen, but they pushed it around. Now, the third thing that I want to discuss is uh, the council has had a uh, historic building survey that they had in the newspaper. Uh, the council was interested in, in hearing from the public, uh, was interested in, in some of uh, the ideas and suggestions, and I, thir I certainly want to thank all the people that sent those responses to us. I, I will read some of them. They're short, uh, just to get an idea of, um, of what the, uh, the attitudes were. Uh, first, first one, I've got, an e I've got emails and I've got letters. I am writing to you to express my opinion on preserving historic buildings. When the KFC was demolished, it left us with a hole and a parking lot. As a child growing up, I remember the building and attended many functions there. The entire street was lined with many stately houses, the KFC being one of them. Now it is gone. Next to be torn down is the Case Home or the Elks Club building. The home has historic significance. There are more historic homes in Fulton. Are we going to let all of our history be torn down? We keep tearing them down one at a time. It is this that we have torn out the very soul of our community. I believe that the first step should be to pass legislation that protects and enhances our historic sites. Do we care enough about Fulton to preserve our history for future generations? I hope so. Thank you for giving me the opinion to express my opinion. Opportunity, excuse me. I've got some pluses and some minuses, and I think it's important that we Can you say who that last writer was? Uh, no, I think probably most people, I don't know, I think sometimes I'll preserve the uh, anonymous, uh, okay, here's another one. It's important to save our historic buildings for future generations. Of course we should. We need to make a list of these properties and preserve them all. They are our history and our children's. We need to know about our past and for our children and their children, etc. There are many ways to build funds on your own, especially with the outcry of many people who care about our past history of Fulton. And of course, there also are there some people that do not necessarily have the same opinion. Historic, the Elks building is only one of many ugly old buildings in Fulton. It will only be a bottomless pit for money to try to keep in repair. Why do you think the Elks wanted to get rid of it? How long has the Elks building been for sale? When did talk of historic preservation of his, this body begin? Building. After it was known there was a potential buyer who would demolish it and use the land to build a best business? Question mark. City budgeted funds should be only for buildings that can be preserved and represent a benefit to the community. Example, community buildings, 
et cetera, et cetera. Thanks. So I thank all the people that responded to the survey. Um, especially, I want to make a note also that uh, the mayor has, <coughs> has inquired into uh, ordinances. He's uh, talked to the Historic Foundation of Oswego County. Uh, Alderman Sherman wrote a letter to Assemblywoman Sullivan, and she responded to his uh, interest in uh, the possibilities of um, passing ordinances and preserving our historic buildings. So uh, maybe Mr. Sherman wants to comment on that also. One of, the, one of the things that she said in her letter is that there is money available for people that want, that, that do have historic homes. Uh, it would really be in the Elks' interest to possibly make those contacts themselves to possibly get funding. There probably would be funding available to them to do their own work on their building. So it, it's really, I, I mean to get a copy to uh, to them also. I have not carbon copied them yet, but it would be in their best interest to at least look into it because they may not have to move. They may be able to stay right where they are and with those funds, you know, keep the building intact and actually probably make improvements inside of it too. I think also uh, Alderman Sherman has indicated as chairman of the legislative committee uh, that he intends to uh, look into uh, any ordinances that we might be able to pass that uh, is going to preserve our historic buildings. I have been watching some of the letters in the paper and uh, I think it was Janet Harder had written that some communities designate certain buildings and then work at it from there. So I don't know if we can go ahead and pinpoint particular buildings in the community and then have approval from those owners. It's just more of looking into what we can do as a community to, uh, to try to preserve some of the older buildings. I do have some background in it. My background is architectural. I used to work for an architectural firm that used, they did a lot of renovation work on historic properties. We, uh, we were working on the Elmira City Hall which was a, a renovation project for the for the city down there. Uh, Elmira was very big into historic preservation projects. So I, I do have a background in it, and you know, uh, it's something I would like to see happen here in Fulton, too. It really does help preserve the economics, especially when it comes down to real estate in the, in the community when, when something like this happens. I have some information uh, that I'll pass on to you in regards to those uh, uh, sample ordinances. Okay. Done. That's it? Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Well, well I always husky. have to uh, follow Alderman Weston. I can't I let him get that. away with I it. Appreciate that. <laughs> I just simply want to commend and thank uh, the young gentlemen and ladies from the junior high, put a job well done, and also their advisors. Uh, you certainly cast a good guiding light upon us. And as Alderman Weston mentioned, uh, some of these things have already been in place and are being developed. So thank you very much. Yeah, they're, they're doing a very good job, Your Honor. Keep it up. Okay. I yield to the left side of the room. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, the kids coming here tonight reminded me of something. It's being wintertime, uh, you don't notice the neighborhoods quite as much. I'm all looking at how the streets are getting plowed and the intersections and things like that. But we have several places, abandoned buildings in my area. And I'm going to ask you again, David, are we ready to take some of them? It's been going on for two or three years. Yeah. I need abstracts of title first. I ordered those in September for about three dozen properties. Okay. So far I've got about 24 of them. And we're going to, because of the, the new year has come, we're going to go back and take the 97s. Also, I'm waiting for the list of those from the chairman's office. I anticipate probably we'll be filing for April 1st, which means um, July 1st. Okay. That'll give us time, yeah. Now we talk about preserving historic buildings. Um, that is a problem. We have a balance problem because uh, a lot of the buildings that we have in the neighborhoods, you know, like there's just no fix to them. So they have to come down and if the lots are big enough, 
we're trying through the AG, Community Development Agency is uh, build new homes, single family homes. But also in this list that I have, uh, for a while, uh, the tax redemption was two years and then it got changed to five, so we've been chasing them. You yeah, understand, in other words, we had some abandoned ones that probably should have come down four or five years ago, but when, when we just got ready to take them, then the council went from a two-year tax redemption to a five-year tax redemption to mirror the county. So we'll put them out another three years, and they're and they're and they're tough. They're they're fire or an accident waiting to happen. Also, we have one that uh, has been on the back burner for a long time, and it's 417 Seneca. The community development agency has a lien on that house. It's been vacant for almost six years, and it's split between them and social services and. It's even worse when the government agency owns a, one of the places that blight the neighborhoods. We need to do something with that. And, bef you know, because the kids get in it, they've knocked the windows out, so we know they've been upstairs. John Crook and I were in it uh, two years ago. That one, I think, could be saved, Your Honor. Uh, the family was moved out of it because of flood contamination in the pipes and in the paint. But uh, there's, a, there's a situation where we own it. I mean, and we're, we're not really doing too much with it. There's actually in that area, there's four of them in that one block area. Mm -hmm. And I think the one I seen on the presentation the kids did is on Sword Street. And that one's, I think there's been at least one fire in there. And uh, so, you keep up the good work. I think you might know how I feel. I, you know, I might want to talk to you and, and get involved with you and show you how government works. And sometimes it's a lot slower than we'd like. But we really are trying, and uh, it's uh, it's it, it, it's sad that, that when they when you know that the, the children are noticing it, but it's good too. You know what I mean? So you did a very good job, and we're all very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session. I'll offer that regards agreement. to contract negotiations and proposed property acquisition. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.